And now, something for all you winter sport fans who also happen to be petrol heads. A story of spikes on bikes. of the world's top ice warriors have arrived in Assen in the Netherlands for the climax to the Ice Speedway World Championship. The sport has traditionally been dominated by the big red machines of the former Soviet Union, winners of 21 world titles since 1966. Now it's the Russians in the vanguard, notably reigning world champion 35-year-old Kirill Drogalin and two-time former world champion 30-year-old Alexander Balashov. After eight rounds, both are tied for the lead on 158 points. The stage is set for a classic showdown. Ice Speedway is most popular in Scandinavia, Germany, the Netherlands, and especially Russia. But to make it in this sport, you need backing, something not so easy to acquire since the breakup of the Soviet Union. During the Soviet period, every Ice Speedway club was given money. But now the situation is quite different. Now every rider has to pay for himself which means that to have good equipment, you have to have a big sponsor. At the moment, for us in Russia, that's a big problem. Devised in the 1920s, Ice Speedway differs greatly from its sister sport, Speedway. The bikes bear a passing resemblance, but have a longer wheelbase and a more rigid frame. Inch-long spikes, 90 on the front and 200 on the rear, are screwed into the treadless tyres to provide grip on the ice. These necessitate protective guards which extend almost to the ice surface. The spike tyres produce a tremendous amount of traction, but as with Speedway, there are no brakes. In both sports, there are 20 qualification heats in each Grand Prix, with the four riders with the best records meeting in the final. The riding styles also differ. With Ice Speedway, riders lean their bikes into the bends rather than letting the back slide out, broadsiding as it's known. Speeds can approach 60 miles per hour on the bends, while on the straights, they nudge 80. It's very dangerous, but that's what makes it a spectacular sport. The riders, as a rule, are well protected, and the competitors taking part at this level have a very high level of professionalism. So a lot depends on your ability. If you're very good at riding a motorcycle, then the risk is minimal. But don't be fooled if you think all the action happens on the track. Trades of Melbourne and Coulthard and Hakkinen as Balashov is accused of forging a pre-race agreement with Nikulin, which allowed him to win the evening's final and open up a nine-point lead. Although any gentleman's accord is being strenuously denied, the world champion clearly has no doubt that he's been frozen out. Yesterday we had a lot of problems with the start and the gears. We fixed them, so I don't think we'll have any problems today. But yesterday Balashov had quite a lot of help, so only a miracle can help us today. A miracle and a lot of hard work. Drogalin's team have been up since 6am working on his bike. With 25 points still available, the Muscovite needs Balashov to slip up to stand any chance of retaining his world title.
Carlin at least manages to stay up, but the changes to his bike haven't helped. After winning only one of his five heats, he fails to make the final, effectively handing the title to his bitter rival. Kalashov shows off some of his party pieces with the championship now secure. And he can celebrate a hat-trick of world titles as he takes his triumphant march down Victory Lane.